what happens when you update an app. We're back on Facebook. We're back, people. All right, adenoids. Version 2.0 from yesterday. What's going on, Square Nation? Dr. Lane bringing you today's wellness wisdom to help you understand why you or one of your children or one of your loved ones might be dealing with some adenoid issues. Similar to the tonsils, the adenoids are, if you go nose straight back, right about here, they sit at the crest of when your nose is going down in your pharynx, which is back here, and down in your throat. Basically, they're lymphoid tissue. So what they're doing is they're balancing the immune system, helping, it's a tool for the immune system to balance out the microbiome and toxicity in there, especially when things are breathed in through the nose. If they're irritant, it, it can put up mucus and things like that to help balance things out. So now that you know where they are and what they do, um, if you or a loved one have an issue with adenoids or tonsils and need a second opinion, check out Dr. Jessica, she's amazing. She is a doctor nurse practitioner who has 20 plus years experience in everything from uh, emergency medicine to family practice and things like that. And she would be happy to look up your nose or down your throat or whatever you need and uh, get you the information you need as far as a natural way of healing your adenoids and, and your tonsils so that you don't have to get them cut out, which is the standard of care. Of course, it's supported by peer-reviewed research. So anyway, all, all kidding aside, it, when in doubt, consult your medical provider for advice. This is not medical advice. It should be taken in as uh, educational material only and uh, for broadening your horizons altogether, okay? So, um, where were we? Framework. So if we talk about the adenoids, your body's responding to external things and or internal imbalances. But that doesn't tell you, like, if all of us are breathing the same air, then why does one person have an issue and the other person doesn't? That's your question, it's your conundrum, if you will. So our, my job is to try and help you understand from a German New Medicine standpoint, why things are changing in the body based on what the person is perceiving as happening in their reality versus the airborne allergen or the irritant. Because you can go get your adenoids and your tonsils cut out, but it's not gonna fix anything because that doesn't tell you why they were having a problem or swollen in the first place. So um, so one concept is it's, it's, it's important for me to camouflage myself. So in order to change how you're perceived in the environment, we tend to be chameleons. So changing who you are, how you act, and having trouble letting go of that concept because lymph is letting go, adenoids are lymphatic tissue, lymphoid tissue, lymphoid cells. And so if you feel like there's an attack or you have to defend yourself, it's sometimes easier to stay below the radar and in order to not, you know, if you pop your head up too high, you might get, you know, the whack-a-mole or, or consequences or, or berated by someone if that's the case, if there's an attack or if you like to defend yourself. So um, one of the things it's really to do is my word must carry more weight or doesn't feel like it carries enough weight. So that's the conflict. When you're, you or your child feels like they don't have a voice, oftentimes kids can feel spoken over, dismissed, you know, go to your room, um, stop talking, whatever. I mean, there's all these kind of things that I heard when I was growing up and um, from other parents, from my parents that were just commonplace. And so when you don't feel like your word has any weight, you don't know how to process that conflict and then it can affect your tonsils or in this case, your adenoids. So um, conflict due to wanting to be trapped by the nose. Uh, so that means like you want to hold on to the scent, like a smell of a mother, a smell of um, a, a fond memory of that time. Because remember, you're going up through the nasal passage and the adenoids sit on the back part of that. And as a result, you know, it, it's, it's a matter of when there's a conflict of wanting to hold on to something, it can manifest in those tissues, okay? Um, it could be a miniature, like a minute conflict, or it could be a massive conflict, just depends on who you are and how it's affecting you. But one word of caution for any parent or grandparent out there, you and your conscious brain can never appreciate what a child is experiencing from their perspective. Their minds are little meaning, mini meaning making machines and therefore they don't typically, especially at the younger ages when people get, typically get these things cut out, they don't have the ability to reason through things and it's more of an emotion, emotional reaction. As a result, if you are trying to rationalize any of this stuff and thinking how could they possibly feel that way, that's not, you know, we don't know. Kids, like I don't know how I thought about things as a four, five, six year old, things like that, maybe three, depends on when I got mine cut out. If you don't give them an opportunity to express themselves and have a voice, then it's likely they're gonna develop some form of a, a lymphoid issue, if you will, whether it's tonsil or adenoid. So um, it can be a devaluation conflict. I'm, I'm too small to make an impact in my world. And if that's the case, then basically what you're looking at is the person will feel, just like it said, in a, and we talked about a minute ago, it's, a, it's about feeling like under attack or feeling overwhelmed by some type of presence, if you will. 
And as a result, then that can feel a conflict in our brain. Our brain doesn't know what to do with it, so it has to shove it somewhere. Our body is recipient of it, right? The mind can forget, but the body never does is the one way to look at it. Or you can tell yourself to forget about it. Um, you know, so what else? Um, a concept that is too difficult to reason through, too difficult to ingest. It's like, um, it's also like, the adenoids can be, I can't process the morsel. It's the idea, the concept, the situation. Uh, might be an offensive smell associated with a stressful time. Someone might actually have an airborne allergen irritant from a mold or pollen or uh, ragweed or something like that. And that can be an irritant because if you smell it during a time of high stress, highly charged emotional events change the limbic system, change how your brain processes things through the amygdala and all the fancy parts of your brain that are responsible for processing long-term uh, memory and stuff like that. So. Having to deal with that is, is a challenge for any one of us. So if you have seasonal allergies, maybe we'll talk about that another day. But you know, if you find this helpful and uh, you are a parent of a child who's struggling with this, because we talked about our lovely participants yesterday, to have them come in and see Dr. Jessica. It's really important that you have a second opinion and she's a great resource for that. Um, you don't have to dive into this stuff if, as long as you're willing to take a step back and say, well, I'm not gonna blame the adenoids or the tonsils for the problem. I'm gonna get a second opinion before I have an ENT tell me I, you're just gonna cut them out because that's just a standard of care. So please comment below with your thoughts, your experiences, your concerns, your doubts, your worries, whatever they are, so that we can support you best on your journey so we can provide you the information you desire to learn and grow and expand your understanding of your body because your body doesn't break down for no reason. The body doesn't make mistakes. So if you could take a step back and say, this is what I wanna focus on, you can heal the conflict, you can resolve it, you can move on with your life, okay? And so that'll be it for today. We'll see you tomorrow for the Wellness of Wisdom. All right, guys, have a great night.